An app on Facebook is nothing more than an HTML page that can have some additional ties to the Facebook data using one of the software development kits, or SDK. Let's start building our project by setting up our folder structure on our server and creating a basic page. So I am at the developer site for Facebook, and I'm going to click on this apps link to get to the app. So this is what your app page looks like once you've created an app, and we've got one right here. So what I want to do is show you that there's a couple of important URLs right here. When we created this page, we created this canvas URL. This is where Facebook is going to look for the page that's going to be on our website. So I need to create this folder on my web server. The other important URL is the canvas page URL. So this is how users will be able to get to our page from within Facebook. Once you have 10 people liking your app, your app will be searchable through this search bar at the top of Facebook. But before we get 10 people, we'll be able to access our page by going to this URL. So I'm going to go and minimize this. And I have a code snippets.txt file already open where I'm going to grab some of the code that I'm going to use for this particular project. And I have an FTP application running, so I'm going to double click to log into view source. And this is just a standard WordPress installation. You can see all the WP files right there. And what I want to do is create a new folder. So I am in transmit right now. I'm going to right click and select new folder. And this new folder is going to be called Facebook because that's what we told the Facebook app page that we wanted to call our folder. So there it is. I'm going to open that up and I need to create a few additional folders. So I'm going to right click and create new folder and I'm going to make an images folder. I'll also make an underscore folder. I like to have all my JavaScript and CSS files organized at the very top of the page. So I like to create this folder to make sure that it goes on top of everything else. And in there, I'm going to create another folder and call it CSS and another folder called JS for my JavaScript files. I'm going to go ahead and create the JavaScript and CSS files. So I'll double click on this and I will create a new file in there. And this file is going to be called mystyle.css. It's where we're going to be putting our styles in the future. So I'm going to back up a folder. On the Mac, I can hit Command Up. I'm using Transmit. And I'm going to double click on the JavaScript folder and make a new file in there. This file is going to be called myscript.js. And that's going to hold our JavaScript. So I'm going to back up a couple of levels, back to the Facebook folder. And I'm going to go to the desktop on my working folder. In my working folder, I have a file called dsmonogram.png. And I want to drop that into the images folder because we're going to be needing that later. So I'm going to drag that in there. Let it go. It's going to copy. And the last file we're going to need is an index file. Now, normally, I would name this index.html. But when working with Facebook, it's actually better to name them index.php. So even though we're just working with the JavaScript SDK, there are some instances where we're going to need the power of the PHP SDK. So I'm going to place the PHP extension there just in case that I'm going to need it for later, which I know I will. So I'm going to just enter to accept that. And I'm going to op open this file with VBEdit. So I'm right-clicking. I have set this transmit up to actually automatic open this so I could just double-click on these. And there's the empty index.php file. So I'm going to switch over to code snippets. And I'm going to grab a very basic HTML page. You can see that this is just a simple HTML structure with a title. And I have a div for the content right there. So I'm going to hit copy and go back into index.php, paste our page. When I save this, you'll notice that it'll upload to the server. You can tell because there's a little bar that appears right here for a fraction of a second. Okay, next, I want to go back to my code snippets.php file. And I want to load up some Google fonts because I'm going to use some custom fonts for this particular app. So to do that, what I did is go to a site called Google Web Fonts, which is at google.com slash web fonts, and find some fonts that I want to use within my project. I'm using a couple of fonts. One of them is called EXO. So once you find the font that you want, all you have to do is hit this Add to Collection button. And I also use another font called Average. And I'm going to add that to the collection. Once I'm ready to use the fonts, all I need to do is click on this Use button, load up whichever weights I want, and then copy this URL right here. Now, because I'm working in Facebook, and Facebook wants all pages to be secure pages, I'm actually going to have to modify this URL to be an HTTPS URL. Google's not going to mind because 
their pages are securely served, and it will prevent us from getting an error in Facebook. So I'm going to just close that out. I already have the line of code here with the two fonts that I'm using. So I'm going to copy that, go back into index.php, and right underneath the title, I'll add that right there. So this is a link to my Google Fonts. Next, I'm going to go back into Code Snippets, and I need to load the style sheet that is in the underscore folder and the CSS folder, and it's called mystyle.css. So I'm going to copy that line of code, and I'll paste that right there. So back into Code Snippets, the next thing I need is to download and load jQuery. Now here's a line that is linked to a local copy of jQuery, but I need to download it from the jQuery server. So I'm going to go back into Safari, and I need to go to the jQuery website, which is at jQuery.com, and I need to download the latest production version. It happens to be 1.7.2, so I'm going to hit download. If you get something like this, it means that it didn't actually download the file. It just loaded it up on your browser. All you got to do is just go to the file menu and select Save As. And I'm going to make sure that is set to page source, not web archive. And I do want to add the .js extension to that. So I'm going to save it on the desktop for easy access. Hit the Save button. I'm going to minimize this. And now I have a copy of jQuery 1.7.2, which is minified. So I'm going to open this up right here open up my JavaScript folder and copy that file into the JavaScript folder. So I'll delete this one because I don't need it anymore. On a Mac, I just hit Command Delete to delete a file that is anywhere on the file structure. So back into my code snippets, I'm going to get the jQuery file and paste it right there. And of course, the next thing would be to actually load my scripts, which is in this file called myscript.js. So I'm going to grab the next piece of code. This is just a link to myscript.js. Back over here, paste that in. Save that. It's updating right here. Back to code snippets. And I'm going to grab some very basic HTML code. This is nothing too exciting. I'm going to grab this right here. I'll copy it and paste it into the index.php file. So I'm going to put this in the content section because it's some content right now just to make sure that our app is working correctly. So I'm going to hit save. And now that I've created this page, this page exists on iviewsource.com. So I'm going to open up a browser and I can close out of jQuery if I want to. I'll make a new window here or a new tab. And I'm going to go to http colon slash slash iviewsource.com slash and the location of my Facebook folder. If I hit return, it should show me the view source app and it looks like a very, very simple HTML page. There's really nothing to this. Cool thing is that if you remember when we were in the Facebook developer section of our app, it told us that there's also a Canvas URL for this application. So if you look at this right here, that's the Canvas URL. So I'm going to copy that, switch back to my tab, and just paste that. This is how people can get to my application right now. And if you look at it, it looks exactly like a Facebook application with the search bar and the custom menu at the top and an additional sidebar on the right hand side. So we've created an actual Facebook application by just creating a very basic HTML page. And this is a fully functional application that people can get to right now on Facebook. It's not very exciting because it doesn't hook up to the user data. We'll talk about how to do that later.